Michael Byrne is my name and I'm involved in the Offaly History Centre at Bury Quay and uh, today I want to talk about uh, the first aerial photograph that was taken of Tullamore Town in 1918. The photograph arose out of the recruiting and reconnaissance duties of the RAF as it was developing in the Midlands in that period and this particular picture it was taken of a horse fair at Tullamore on the 16th of August 1918. It was used, as well as pictures of Mullingar and Longford, to assist in the recruiting drive uh, in the war effort. The war had only two or three months more to go, but of course that wasn't known at the time, and it was felt that uh, aerial activity would attract a lot of young Irish men to join the uh, the air forces and get involved in the war effort. Uh, I doubt if it achieved that to any great extent, but what it did get for us was this very interesting photograph, which was taken by a Captain Dimmock on behalf of the air forces and is now in a collection in South Dublin libraries. The particular picture we're looking at, in fact, was included in a book of photographs of Ireland published in Chicago in 1921 and where the Captain Dimmock was saying that it was a horse fair which it clearly is in the American book printed in 1921 it's said to be reconnaissance by the British forces of a public meeting of Irish people who were concerned about conscription and so forth so you can see that already the two camps were using these pictures as part of the propaganda effort. For convenience and because of the particular picture, I'm going to take it from the bottom up on the left. And we're starting there at Charleville School, which was built in 1811. And you can see immediately a gap uh, between the well, Carl Henry Street houses and the school. That gap has been closed off now with a building. And then you can see the various gardens of the of the houses in O'Carroll Street, which all date from the 1820s and 30s. But more interestingly, as I go across again, we're coming to the horse fair itself, which was conducted in in Henry or O'Carroll Street. Generally, it was called Henry Street and still is by some and moves on into the square. And we have the terrace of houses, which are still there on that on the on the on the west side of or Carroll Street and interestingly now we have the old distillery which dates from the 1820s and by 1918 was part of the P&H Egan industrial empire and was used as a maltings and even more interesting is the is the building that looks like St Philomena's school nowadays the Tullamore Youth Club but was in fact the Foresters Hall at that time and that is the building that was destroyed on the 31st of October 1920 in retaliation for the shooting of Sergeant Cronin who lived in the middle of Henry Street near to the present shop on the southern side of that street or on the on the, yes, on the southern side. So that's that building, that photograph is of interest. There is one now surviving in the National Library of the building as ruined uh, on October 1920. Moving on then up to Church Street What's good is the the gasometer is there at the back of the gas works in Harbour Street. That service of gas was in Tullamore from 1860 and changed in 1921. In October of that year, we moved over to provision of electrical lighting. Now, beside that are the harbour buildings, and you can see the warehouses there, which were still extant until about 1960. And beyond that, just to the north of it, are buildings which were which partly have been removed. And beside that is the new church of 1906. Otherwise, there's very little traffic in any of the streets. All of Harbour Street, all of Church Street, all of Patrick Street. They're all completely quiet. I presume because of the war and because of the scarcity of petrol at the time and the fact that it was rationed. Moving on then towards uh, Column Kid, William Street, you can see the great bulk of the new Scally's shop, 
which is still there in William O'Collum Kill Street and the terrace of houses including the the three storey building which was erected in the 1890s and where Max Cabs is now located. Also going further into Offley Street there's a two storey building which does not appear to be there now at the back of uh, the house there heading into the Offley Street lane there. And beyond that is also of interest in that you can just about see the barracks and the row of houses known as Tay or Tea Lane, which of course was demolished in the 1950s. And over to the left then, you can see Egan's new front, which was erected in 1910, but also the industrial buildings which are behind, uh, and we can see a part of the square. So that is the, that is the picture that was published by uh, the Irish publisher in Chicago, in 1921 and it, and is a different picture in that it has more detail to the one that was published in Irish Life in 1918. That I'm now showing you but the quality of that picture is not so good but it does have the barracks in full on the, on the northern part of the picture. You can see it there at the foot of Patrick Street and you can see Kilbride Street and the canal is that white representation, the straight line. And you can also see the row of houses which constituted O'Malloy Street at that time, or, or Pe a Pensioners Row, I think it was called. And also O'Dempsey Street, or, or uh, Milestone Lane, I think was another name. And uh, we can also see the chimney stacks of the distillery and uh, some of the warehouse buildings. And another little thing that I couldn't see in the first picture I showed you from Chicago is the uh, 1906 laundry, which is which was later the Williams Wholesale and has now been demolished in favour of the new Lidl supermarket on Church Road. And you can just see the chimney there of the laundry. So that is a second image and is of considerable interest for that reason. And that, as I said, was published in Dublin-based Irish Life magazine. And the third picture, which is, is more to show you the use of propaganda, is the fact that the Chronicle, the Boer Chronicle, called the photograph Tullamore Gathering in their issue of September the 5th, 1918. It was a gathering, but it wasn't a meeting of people. It was only a horse fair. So, if anything, the propaganda use of the photograph while it may have been started by uh, Captain Dimmock and his employers, uh, was continued by the loyalist, Boer-based chronicle, and it was only uh, the opposite view then was used in the American publication. So it's a fine picture. It's the earliest one we have of uh, Tullamore. And of course, we are always hoping that we will find other aerial photographs of the town prior to 1950. We have some from then on. And we have a lot, of course, from the year 2000. But I suppose in the overall, we probably don't have more than a dozen pictures of from the year before 2000. Mary Dunn, the photographer, took some. Richard May took some. And a few were taken by independent newspapers. But this, as I said, is the earliest one and is, a, is of great value to us as part of the commemoration of the decade of centenaries. Thank you very much.